Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good Monday morning. It is March 30th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Obviously, uh, coronavirus still the number one topic of conversation. And I'd heard something about this, but this is the first time I read an article that backs it up. I'd heard about this, too. And uh, you found this article this morning on businessinsider.com. The headline is if you've lost your sense of smell or taste, you could be a hidden carrier of coronavirus. Now, just real quick, my sister, because we were all talking about it, and she said, She'd heard this. And so immediately Tony and I went and grabbed some bleach and sniffed the bleach. And I do not recommend you do this at home because that was probably not the smartest thing in the world to do. And I had plenty of sense of smell. So I was like, shoo, okay, that's good. Well, here's what the article says. A sudden loss of smell known as anosmia or hyposmia can be a symptom of coronavirus, even if patients experience no other symptoms. That's according to leading rhinologists in the United Kingdom. Evidence from South Korea, China, and Italy suggests that many patients with COVID-19 may have experienced a loss of smell without any other symptoms. Now, the British Association of blah, 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 calls on the authorities to advise anyone with a loss of smell or taste to self-isolate. And then listen to this. They said young people could be more likely to carry the disease without presenting the more commonly recognized symptoms of fever and coughing. So how about that? If you or anyone that you love loses a sense of taste or smell, you might have it. That's just, I don't even know what to say. Another interesting wrinkle in what's wound up to be a worldwide crisis. That said, though, there are no issues of uh, you should go get tested. That's not what they're saying. They're saying you should self-quarantine unless you have severe symptoms of some sort. Then you seek medical help. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. President Trump's dream to have churches filled on Easter Sunday won't come true. We will be extending our guidelines to April 30th to slow the spread. The Los Angeles Convention Center is being converted into a field hospital. The mayor reports a 16% increase in coronavirus cases in just the last 24 hours. A plane crash in the Philippines that killed all eight people on board was taking a coronavirus patient to Japan for treatment. The crash happened during a takeoff from Manila's International Airport Sunday. The pandemic is further disrupting the 2020 census and now the Census Bureau says that extending the suspension of field work until April 15th, that's two weeks long longer than originally planned. There's new hope for medical workers facing a shortage of N95 respirators. An Ohio company just got FDA approval to sterilize up to 400,000 respirators each day. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says citizens can expect the coronavirus relief checks to be deposited directly into their account within the next three weeks. The World Health Organization is encouraging people to play video games amid the pandemic. The U.S. ambassador to the organization tweeted his support asking people to help continue social distancing efforts by picking up a game and helping save lives. People are apparently panic buying baby chicks. Many hatcheries are selling out of them as people look for a reliable egg supply. Jesus Torres decided to turn his Irwin home into Disney World for his 18-month-old daughter Isla. British DJ claims the woman in this plastic bubble was asked to leave a supermarket. Maybe it was a stunt, but either way, it went too far. With so many TV reporters working from home, it was only a matter of time until something like this happened. Check out Jessica Lang. Technology kills viruses in just what? What did you do, Mom? Dad, holy crap! <laughs> Is that real? Did that real. really happen? Yeah, I think that's Because real. I only asked because our, our director, Jamie, brought this up this morning. The shot was framed oddly. And I know that reporter was doing a, what we call a stand-up at the sink, but it was just far enough to the right, right to the, have Dad Why would the hallway be pop? in it, is your question. That's her point. Again, that's all Jamie. She's our super sleuth this morning. Well, if it was her attempt to get on national television, clearly it, it worked. worked. <laughs> it did work. As her father's belly also made it to national television. Oh, sure did. Yep. Way to go. And, you know, I have a question. Riddle me this, Batman, Justin. Ooh. These people who are buying up these little chicks because of the egg shortage, right. don't they have to wait like two years for them to grow up before they can even have eggs? Here's the honest truth. I had not thought about it, so you guys talked about it this morning, but that makes perfect sense. Yes, I think you're so right. So what's the point? I mean, to buy a hen, maybe, because you could... Right. I, but I, I, a baby chick? I don't know, and consequently, I've, I haven't had a whole lot of issues finding eggs. I did initially, I haven't either. but lately it's been okay. So, I don't know. Oh, David got toilet paper. Big deal. <laughs> Big no. deal. Yeah. There, there goes our lead story. <laughs>
if you need some, just, just email David. Uh, 66 <laughs> degrees at the airport right now. 66 Gonzales, 57 in Rock Springs right now. And uh, temperatures today should be up around 79 degrees. About a 30% chance of rain. We're seeing a couple showers and uh, even a couple storms out there right now. So the possibility is there. Let's take a look at the radar. And most of this is pretty light, but we are seeing some light showers even here around San Antonio. I've seen some drops on live cams, so it's going to be a little damp this morning. Uh, we may even see some of that drizzly stuff. A little closer look here at Bear County, you can see some light returns working south to north across the city as we speak. So the forecast for today, 30% chance of showers. We basically stay in the 70s here because cloud cover is not going to allow us to warm up all that much. Cold front comes through tonight. I say cold front, it will actually be warmer tomorrow, but the front will dry us out, bring us some drier air on Tuesday. We'll talk about that and some more pretty good rain chances coming up down the line. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Justin. And we've got a uh, leftover accident there. 410 and Fredericksburg SAPD and EMS are on the scene. No sight of the wrecker. We've got some skid marks out there. Looks like a couple of vehicles were involved. Well, top stories that we're following for you today. We are still waiting to learn the name of a 17 year old boy killed overnight during a shooting on the east side. San Antonio police tell us the boy and his 13 year old sister were definitely targeted in their words. The shooting happened around 1 30 this morning in the 400 block of Aransas Avenue. SAPD Chief William McManus says the suspect knocked on the door and when the siblings opened it, they were shot. The 17 year old died at the scene. The 13 year old was hit twice and was taken to the hospital. Now she is expected to be OK. McManus says invest investigators have a few motives in mind, but no arrests have been made. City of San Antonio has released location based data that allows people to track the number of COVID-19 cases by zip code. As of now, the zip code 78209, which comprises Alamo Heights and Terrell Hills, is the only zip code with more than eight cases. Ten other zip codes have at least five cases, while many others have less than five. There are 157 total cases with five confirmed deaths in Bear County. Stick with KSAP for the latest coverage on the pandemic. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has put a strain on the San Antonio Food Bank and its ability to help those impacted. But now the agency is asking for volunteers ahead of their upcoming distribution. The food bank says the number of families asking for help has doubled. The agency has started setting up centralized distribution sites where people can stay in their car and pick up their food through a drive through But the food bank says these mega sites require a lot of volunteers. We're asking all of those different organizations to all lean in and to help us. And it's a way that we can all come together in the fight against hunger and do it in the most efficient and, and food safe those in need will need to pre-register before picking up food. The first distribution site is scheduled for tomorrow at the Alamo Dome. Again, those who don't want to pre-register will be turned away. You can find more information on KSAT.com. Turning now to your morning headlines, workers at an Amazon warehouse in New York are upset with management and a doctor in Arkansas suffering a huge loss after a picture went viral with him and his son. And another birthday party in the streets of a town, this time for a World War II veteran. We say welcome back to David Sears, who was oh, off last man, week. Who got some toilet paper and not only toilet paper, Ooh. he hit the trifecta. Ooh. You want to tell him? Ooh. Yeah, well, well, let's do this first and then we'll, we'll talk about it. All right, that's the deal. It's, it's a big deal. I know. Tell, does, We're I a little jealous. Up, I ain't giving up my toilet paper. <laughs> Workers at the Amazon Distribution Center on Staten Island are not happy. They are planning to walk off the job this afternoon because they don't like the way management has handled the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. There was a confirmed case of COVID-19 at that facility last week, and now employees want a place shut down and they want it sanitized. The employee leading the walkout claims five other employees have tested positive. Amazon said yesterday that health and safety is a top priority, and now every employee has to have their temperature checked every day. There are also some other precautions they're putting in place. The walkout set for 1130 our time. Talk about an incredible story. Remember this picture? It went viral. That's Dr. Jared Burks and his son. Dr. Burks is on the front lines fighting COVID-19. So he wanted to keep his son away from him so he wouldn't go in the house. But unfortunately, Mother Nature, not too sympathetic. She came barreling through the Burks home with a tornado. He was actually at home since his wife and son were at their parents' house. His wife called him and warned him about that tornado, and sure enough, it was headed right for him. I saw it coming towards the house, so I was like, oh, it's probably time for me to get in the closet. So by the time I got in the closet, it was about 30 seconds, and then I started hearing glass breaking, uh, the wall started shaking, um, like my ears started popping in the house. It felt like it lifted up and slammed back down. This is unbelievable. When things calmed down, he emerged from the closet to find his house practically gone. 
Right then and there, he was thankful that his wife and son were not home at the time. While his community is helping him out because he's fighting that virus, his attitude is unbelievable. He said, quote, we will get through this. A GoFundMe page has been set up by family friend, people from all over the country donating now. Unbelievable. Another social distancing birthday celebration. Oh, this time for 101 year old Norbert Kopeko, a World War II veteran. His neighbors making sure he's able to enjoy his big day. This happening in Virginia. They all gathered on the street to help him celebrate. I think it's just so unusual to have the neighbors come together and celebrate a birthday to an old geezer like me. It's just amazing. But I've got the wonderful, the most wonderful neighbors in the world. That old geezer looks pretty good, doesn't he, for 101? He left the, uh, left the Army, and then he became an accountant for several years, I guess several decades. Okay, so, so what was the magical trifecta here? So apparently when you get into the 60 and older club, things kind of work in your favor in some instances. Yes, sir, they so, do. You know, Costco has a time on Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings from 8 to 9 for seniors. Okay. And I you fit into, into the, the senior, senior category. category yeah. so, by age only. I, yeah, I, I went down there and uh, got in line, got up real early, got in line. I was the 100th person through the door. And you got? Toilet paper, uh -huh. paper towels, and Clorox wipes. And we can't even have a party at your house. But my house is very clean. <laughs> We're glad to hear it. You Congratulations. Well David. stocked. How about that? Huh? Mission accomplished, Never Mr. Sears. Never been so excited about buying something in my entire life when I walked out of there with that package of toilet paper. Those are three of the biggies. Yep. Yeah. All right, David. Congratulations. Good. We're Thank very happy you. for you. Good to have you back with us this week. <laughs> glad to be. Time right now is 9.09, 66 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A lot of people quarantined at home need the help of neighbors, family or friends to get essentials like food. How one dog in Colorado has been offering his neighbors a helping paw. Even though her school's closed because of the outbreak, a Michigan principal still found a way to deliver some good news to two deserving seniors. RJ Marquez has details coming up later in our newscast. And during this pandemic, local restaurants and small businesses trying to operate, trying to shift, making sure that they can still give the people what they want. We're going to break down what Bistro 9 is doing right after the break. And checking the stock market, it's up, but only a little bit, up 71 points at 21,699. you can move right now and you can hire movers to help you. Moving companies fall under the transportation category of essential businesses that can remain open. Of course, if you are planning a move, everyone should practice social distancing and self-isolate after arriving in their new home. I hope that answers your questions. If you have more, you can send them to ksat.com and you could also sign up for our SAQ newsletter. That's ksat.com slash newsletter. A viewer sent us an email saying uh, about the chicks. Takes them about six to ten months, depending on breed, to be even start laying eggs. And then it takes a couple of weeks, right, for them to lay the eggs. I, I'm not a chicken expert. I mean, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, not a poultry pro. Sorry, Les. Well, I mock at that. I know. All right. During this, <laughs> sorry, Justin. During this pandemic, small businesses are working to figure out how to stay operating and keep their employees on the payroll. It's an issue around the world and even right here in San Antonio, of course. Max Bassey joins us live from Bistro 9. Max, what's the latest out there right now? Good morning, guys. This place is empty as most restaurants here in San Antonio should be really shifting to the takeout orders and shifting, doing what they can to stay open. That's what a lot of restaurant owners and chefs are having to do, joined here by Chef Damien. So what are you guys doing business-wise to stay open? Good morning. We're, <clears throat> we're doing everything we can to adapt uh, beyond, beyond just uh, the takeout and delivery. We've expanded the menu we, uh, to, to offer dishes that are more family style and, and more affordable for people and quicker to, uh, to deal with. And we're rotating the, uh, uh, the staff in order for them to have a few hours, um, a few hours uh, distributed you know, day in and day out. And uh, uh, we're also um, doing everything we can to keep people safe. 
So we've been using the germ zapper in order to just take care of uh, uh, bacteria on, on food and make sure if you get it, you don't get it from us. And, um, and after that, we just sit patiently and uh, wait for this thing to blow over. Um, it's a brave new world, but um, one day at a time. Oh, we know the stimulus package got approved. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, um, it's 880 pages, so I know our CPA is uh, uh, combing through it, trying to figure out um, how this is going to work. We know that payroll technically gets covered, which that's the biggest part, and that should be the biggest help. And then uh, rent utilities. The, uh, the unknown part is for how long. How long is this going to affect small business? You know, are people going to go flock back to restaurants as soon as they reopen? I don't know. My guess is probably not as much as we think. All right. Well, Chef, thank you so much. And you talked about some of those precautions that you are taking, obviously the regular precautions, but also you alluded to the germ zapper. Guys, we are going to show you what the germ zapper is, what it does, and why it is so important. Coming up at 930. Mark, Leslie. Max, thank you very much. Nice to hear from a business owner directly because uh, the effects still being felt. We, there's so many unknowns still. Well, what I really love is the restaurants that we have done the takeout with, they are very careful. They make sure everything is sealed up properly. They're all using gloves and sanitizers to make sure that, you know, it's, it's fine. It's, you can order from them and feel confident about it. Well, what's anything but fine this year has been the oak pollen. Oh. The uh, allergen levels have been off the charts this year. As a matter of fact, Justin, I typically suffer mightily from mountain cedar. I got through this one like a breeze, but now that we've hit the oak, Ouch. Everywhere. Yeah, it, it's just been really tough this year. We, we got up to 30,000 today. I really thought that we'd start maybe trending down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit of rain out there, but not the case. So today is the highest level so far this season. Let's take a look at the numbers last two weeks. We had high counts much of last week. We had the, on the 23rd, we got down to zero, but then it really jumped up in the last five days. We've been at 24,000 or above, and that's really tough to deal with, especially in the conditions that we're in now with everything going on with COVID. This is no fun. Uh, I'm really, really hoping that if we can get a little bit of rain today, maybe it'll wash some of that out of the air. We've got some more chances of rain down the line. So I'm hopeful, uh, but right now it's just uh, not a great situation. And we are basically at the peak of oak season now. So that's the other thing we have going for us. We should, as we get into April, start to see things calm down a little bit. Time lapse shows we've had cloudy skies through much of the morning. A few rain showers here and there. 66 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 58. East Julie winds at about 6. You can see some of those waves of light rain coming through there. We just have seen some here within the last 30 minutes or so. Doppler radar shows that this is very light stuff, but it is going to get those roadways wet. It's going to uh, cause you to use the windshield wipers if you are out. Otherwise, it's a, certainly a good morning to stay home. We've got a couple showers here around Cuero. Nixon, uh, maybe a little bit heavier stuff out towards Hallettsville. We have seen a couple of lightning strikes this morning, but nothing that's terribly heavy. And there's some of that light shower activity that is working through San Antonio as we speak. Obviously, a lot of cloud cover there, too. Temperatures in the mid-60s right now. 65 at Randolph, 66 Castroville, 61 Bernie Stage. Zoom out some, everybody. Uh, really dealing with cloudy skies until you get down to the coast, and that's where we are seeing some peaks of sun. And as a result, some warmer temperatures. 77 Corpus, 74 Victoria. And the dew points are high in the 70s. It's very sticky out there. Here's some more good news. We're going to get some drier air coming in. We're going to get a uh, frontal boundary tonight, and that's going to move through, I'd say, overnight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll start to feel some of that drier air. Dew points in the 40s and 50s, which will feel much better tomorrow afternoon. We'll see a lot more sun. Here's the future cast. Shows a couple showers through 3 o'clock, maybe a couple thunderstorms. By 7 o'clock, a lot of this is starting to move east. Here comes that frontal boundary and that drier air. And by tomorrow, we're talking about sunny skies and low humidity. Let's go forward in time even more, though. We'll work into Wednesday here, just a few clouds, no big deal. But by Thursday, we'll get a dry line moving in. That could kick up a few showers and storms, just some isolated stuff. And then another frontal boundary by Friday. This one, I think, has the best potential to bring us some rain. So there is uh, some more chances, as we mentioned, down the line. 79 degrees today, 30% chance of rain. East Julia winds 5 to 15. We'll go 82 tomorrow, mostly sunny, 79, partly cloudy Wednesday. Some chances of storms Thursday. Best chance right now as it stands on Friday. And then even some more chances as we get into the weekend. Guys. Thank you, Mr. Horn. 920, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Still ahead.
A dog in Colorado has been a very good boy. How he's been delivering food and other essential items to neighbors. As we head to break, let's take a look at some more pictures of healthcare workers around the Alamo City area. This is Mindy. She works in the ER at Children's Hospital of San Antonio. She says the marks on her face are wearing from an N95 mask all day. We so appreciate you. And Kathy, we appreciate you too. A pediatric nurse, thank you so much for all your hard work during this really difficult time. If you'd like to submit a picture of a healthcare worker in your life, go to KSAT.com, search for Community Gallery. As people vulnerable to coronavirus stay at home, they often have to rely on others to get essentials. That might mean ordering a delivery. It can also mean getting help from a neighbor or maybe even a neighbor's dog. Megan Hiller from KKTV in Colorado Springs introduces us to a golden retriever who's doing his part. Bring it to mom. Good boy. That's Sunny, the seven year old golden retriever turned delivery dog. She got the list. She gave it to Sunny. Sunny brought it to me. I went to the store, got her her groceries, and he delivered them all to her. He's been making trips back and forth from his house to his neighbors since the coronavirus outbreak started weeks ago. What a wonderful thing. Just a sweet thing. So we started doing the schlepping <laughs> back and forth. And it's been fun. It's been a, a real treat. Yeah, who's a good boy? Hellman has some underlying health issues and relies on oxygen to breathe. She says getting food and visits from the pup makes those days a little more bearable. Little things like Sonny coming over to visit is nice and it makes you feel good. And it's a way of communicating. Anybody can do something so small that could be so helpful. Well, that was KKTV's Megan Hiller reporting from Colorado. Uh, Sonny also gets the mail, picks up trash around the neighborhood when he's out on his walks. What a sweet dog. Who is a good boy. Good boy. Sonny. More ahead on GMS 8 9, 926. The U.S. now has more than 100,000 coronavirus cases, and President Donald Trump is extending the social distancing guidelines until the end of April. So we're going to speak with CNN's Whitney Wilde live in Washington. She has all the latest developments. Rapper Cardi B calling the work of one of San Antonio's muralists amazing. RJ Marquez has more on that in our trending stories next. And as we head break, a quick check of the roads. No problems to report in this area. 10 across roads. We'll be back. Welcome back. It is 929 this morning on KSAT.com. A principal did not let a school closure stop her from announcing this year's valedictorian and salutatorian. And Cardi B gives a shout out to a San Antonio artist. RJ Marquez joins us live from home. And there he is. RJ, how was your weekend? And we miss having you around, my yeah, friend. How you doing? Doing good, guys. Doing good. Uh, had a good weekend. Actually, my wife uh, stepped up big time because she gave me a haircut. I was in desperate need of a haircut, ah. and she did some quality work. Her Nicely first time ever done. she's ever done it. Yeah. Hey, hey so, David's looking uh, for a yeah. volunteer to cut his hair, just so you know. <laughs> right? Yeah, this looks good on the front and the sides. How's the back look, yeah. RJ? Yeah, back's good. Okay. Everything looks good. Considering it was the first time, I was really nervous, but uh, she did a tremendous job. So uh, Is she yeah, going to let you cut her hair now? Probably not. No, definitely. That's <laughs> definitely not. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, cutting her hair anytime soon. I don't Smart think so. Man. <laughs> yeah, staying away from that one. But uh, yeah, guys, had a great weekend. Definitely miss you guys as well. Um, we've also we've had a lot of stuff, of course, going on on our website. And uh, we want to first start with a, uh, a great gesture here by uh, the Shirts Professional Firefighters Association. They are lending a helping hand to those in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what they did, members of the association voted to release funds to the public to assist in relief in relief efforts. They posted some pics on, on Facebook of members handing out $1,000 worth of HEB gift cards to customers standing in line outside the store last week. And the association also donated an additional $1,000 Friday to two locally owned restaurants. One of the restaurants, Garcia's, matched the donation and made meals for people in need. So a lot of great stuff there, kind of paying it forward sort of going back and forth. And if you go on to the, uh, the shirts, volunteer firefighter, the, their, um, their Facebook page, uh -huh. they actually talk a lot about how they still practice social distancing and they were still kind of, and that the cards were sanitized and everything went, uh, pretty much as planned for them. So I great job. A, by a, a little bit of love for shirts. So I'm not happy to see that. I wonder yeah, why. I was going to say that was the story from your neck of the woods there, yeah. Leslie. <laughs> love it. 
All right, moving on here, guys. A great story out of Michigan where a principal found a way to deliver good news to two deserving seniors, even though, of course, school is closed. Michelle Florian wanted to honor the school valedictorian and salutatorian, but didn't just want to give them a call or send them an email. She went to Caitlin Watson's workplace and ordered a drink through the drive through She went and got her order and surprised Caitlin, who was at the window, and told her she was the class valedictorian for 2020. Pretty cool stuff there. The principal then made a water bottle flip video. I had to look up what this video is, but apparently it's popular amongst uh, kids right now. It's like a one of these like online challenges. And she made one of these videos to let the salutatorian, Alyssa Tarkowski, know that she had received that honor and all of that was posted on the school's Facebook page. That's so, yeah. super cool. Another one that makes yeah, smile. it smile. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, just talking with a lot of teachers recently, they miss their students. They really do. And so this was a great uh, this was a great thing for that principal to do and make sure she honored those two kids for all their hard work. Are we Keep finding those feel good stories for us? We agree. Yeah, so what, what's absolutely. Up on, what's up on KSAT, RJ? OK, Cardi B, I know Mark and Leslie, I know you guys have been wondering what is going on with Cardi B during this quarantine. We right? were just <laughs> talking about that. Wow, right? I like so in the front yeah. of my mind. Yes. Right. Yes. yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, uh, she took to her Instagram to shout out a local artist, Colton Valentine's work. So Valentine created a mural for the rapper and updated it to show it with a face mask. So this is a pretty interesting mural. The mural is on a building near the corner of San Pedro Avenue and Cypress. Cardi B posted on her Instagram that the uh that this mural was wild this was amazing i appreciate the love and it said it makes her so happy valentine told ksat that he just wanted to bring some laughs during this uh during you know what's been kind of a, a down sort of period so mm -hmm. pretty cool stuff there updating it so real quick guys moving on to the days of the week a lot of stuff going on it is today is national take a walk in the park day and national virtual vacation day which i know we're probably all gonna have to take there tomorrow's national crayon day and tater day wednesday is april fool's day of course thursday world autism awareness day friday national chocolate mousse day saturday is national chicken cordon bleu day Sunday is National Deep Dish Pizza Day, and it's also Palm Sunday. I heard somebody talking about April Fool's the other day, and maybe take it easy, be sensitive and considerate. Considerate. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. Google's yeah. not going to so. take part in it. Usually, they do some big April oh, Fool's wow. thing, and they oh, said they they're not yeah. doing it this year yeah. because okay. of yeah, all the seriousness. Yeah, very interesting. All right. Yeah, yeah our, very our, interesting. RJ Marquez from our digital team and from GMS89. Great to see you, RJ. Yeah, great to see you guys, too. Take care. All right. Let's go outside with live cam. Yep, and bring Justin Horn into our conversation. Not a very pretty picture. No, it's getting drearier by the minute. We've got some showers coming through, and these showers will be off and on uh, through the day today. We'll have some chances of showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms, and then by this afternoon and this evening, the rain chances will start to go away. Let's check in on the radar real quick, and you can see where the rain is right now. It's all pretty light, uh, but we've got some returns here across Bear County. We're seeing that uh, some rain is falling here in town. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. Uh, you see some of those light showers working south to north. So this is the kind of radar you can expect uh, over the next few hours. And uh, the pollen count, if you missed it, we talked about it earlier, but Oak is at 30,900. That is the highest so far this season. Mold, mulberry, pecan on the low categories. Mold may jump up a little bit, though, because of today's rainfall. 64 Comfort, 65 Boulevardy, 67 in New Braunfels, 66 in Floresville with cloudy skies there. Forecast. We're going to keep things fairly overcast. We may see some breaks by this evening. Rain chances will start to taper off. A lot more sun tomorrow and drier air, too. It should feel pretty nice. We'll talk about that forecast and some chances for thunderstorms by the end of the week coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. 37 at Jones Avenue. We are seeing no accidents anywhere on any of these cameras, including 281 at Grayson. Well, during this pandemic, small businesses and local restaurants are working to not only stay open, but keep their employees and their customers safe. Our Max Massey joins us live from Bistro 9 over on Broadway Avenue. Max, what are some of the precautions over there? Good morning, guys. Well, if you take a look around, one of the big precautions, taking the dine-in option off the table. It is takeout only. We are joined here, Chef Damien of Bistro 9. So Chef, what are some of these precautions that you guys are taking? Good morning. Well, I mean, beyond the regular sanitizing, the gloves, uh, we are using a, a UV wand. Uh, this one's called the germ zapper. And, and uh, what it does is basically uh, spray everything with UV that you pointed at to. And so that's all it takes is just a couple of movements over it. And uh, or at least the box claims it kills 99.99% of uh, viruses and germs. 
So um, early on, we started, uh, uh, I bought a couple of these and we started using them even when we were still open on the plates. And now we make sure we just cover all the takeout with the uh, zapper, make sure we go the extra mile and, and make sure people don't get anything they don't want to from us. Absolutely. Now, I know you guys you know, take a lot of pride in keeping all 35 employees on the payroll. Uh, now, doing this, making sure all the precautions in place, making sure everyone's healthy. Yeah, that's just, uh, you know, the prime directive right now is just uh, we keep ourselves um, healthy and then we keep others healthy and just wait for tomorrow and see what it brings. All right, Chef, thank you so much. And like Chef Damien was saying, Bistro 9, other local restaurants and businesses doing what they can, making sure customers, making sure employees are as safe as possible as we move forward. Mark, Leslie. We sure appreciate them. Yep, hope they can hang in there. Max Massey, lines from Bistro 9 over on Broadway. Our next story here, Leslie, I'd heard about this, but I didn't know the details, and I didn't even know that the spring breaker who got in hot water with dad Big hot had, water. had been down at Padre. I know, so there's a Texas connection there to this. There is a Texas connection. Uh, when dad and mom tell you do not go to spring break and be around a bunch of kids on the beach, they mean it. I know, and I know when we were in college, we were all like, oh, I know way better than mom and dad do. But Peter Not Levine, under these day and times. Man, that's true. Peter Levine from Nanuet, New York, advised his 21-year-old son, Matt, against going to South Padre Island mm -hmm. for spring break this year. He did, but guess what? His son, Matt, did not listen. He, uh, report, listen to this, reportedly even sent his father pictures showing him in situations that could have exposed him to the virus. He goes, I talked to them every day and told them maybe they should come home. I was aggravated. The news here was getting worse and worse. Matt sent me pics of him and his friends congregating outdoors, listening to live music. It's a scene you would not want to be in. Matt and his friends apparently had trouble getting home because of the pandemic. Their return flight to New York was rerouted to Tennessee after the reports of the coronavirus case at LaGuardia. When Matt finally got back to the house, to his father's house, he apparently found his car, his car full of groceries. Yeah, and it wasn't because they were being nice. It wasn't a welcome home present. Nope. His grandparents live there. No need to expose them to God knows what he was exposed to, the father explained. Uh, Matt ultimately returned to his off-campus apartment in Massachusetts, which has since closed due to the outbreak, but his lease ends in June. After that, his father isn't sure where he will end up after that. But it won't be at their house. That's I guess the main not. thing because... Yeah. Too dangerous. And, the, and here's the thing. A lot of the kids for spring break thought that they were kind of immune to it because it was it talked about an old person's uh, disease or somebody who has an underlying condition. And it turns out that's not the case. Well, I saw sound bites with spring breakers just last week and they're like, hey, if I get corona, I'll get corona. Mm-hmm. Not smart. Pretty cavalier attitude. Just about 940, 66 degrees. You're watching GMS at 9. 100,000. That's how many Americans could die from COVID-19. That's how serious this is. It's according to the nation's top infectious disease expert. CNN's Whitney Wilde is live after the break with more. According to the CDC, there is some evidence that COVID-19 can remain viable up to days and up to hours on different surfaces and materials, and that does include clothing. As to how long the virus can stay on clothing depends on the fabric. Smooth surfaces like leather and vinyl can be wiped clean, whereas polyester and spandex like material may retain germs. The CDC suggests washing clothing items using the warmest appropriate water setting and making sure to dry them completely. Also, it's a good idea to clean and disinfect hampers. It's suggested you wash and change your clothes anytime others have touched them or you have been in large gatherings. I hope that answers your question. If you have more, you can send them to ksat.com on our SAQ articles. You can also sign up for our SAQ newsletter. That's at ksat.com slash newsletter. As the number of cases of coronavirus continues to grow here in the U.S., President Donald Trump has extended the social distancing guidelines for another month. CNN's Whitney Wilde joins us now live from Washington to explain. Well, good morning, Whitney. What is the latest? 
Well, good morning to you. The president is extending those social distancing guidelines from what he had hoped would be the beginning of the uh, restart of the economy, April 12th to now April 30th. And this comes after he was, uh, he and his team had overlooked and began to really comprehend a very grim data point, and it's this. Dr. Anthony Fauci and Dr. Deborah Burks have said that they believe that between 100,000 and 200,000 Americans will die of coronavirus, and that's if things go well. So that is a very startling statistic to begin the week with. The president saying, uh, in effect, he couldn't ignore that data, uh, accepting Dr. Anthony Fauci's assertion that this crisis will get worse before it gets better. Better. And it, to that effect, saying that we need to have these more stringent measures in place for a longer amount of time. The president finishing his remarks by saying if all of America does these recommendations to the letter, then this what he called a nightmare will be over faster. Back to you. Whitney, can you elaborate on the latest projections on the expected number of cases and the number of fatalities? Absolutely. So the latest number of the total cases here in the U.S. could reach into the millions. And doctors are coming to that conclusion by looking at the models, the low end and the extreme end, and coming to somewhere in the middle. So uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, doc Dr. Deborah Burke saying, again, that they believe 100,000 to 200,000 Americans will likely lose, lose their lives because of this virus. Back to you. That's so frightening. Okay, Whitney, well, we'll see you then. Thank you so much. Thank you, Whitney. Stay safe right now. It is 946 Central Time, 66 degrees. Not a beautiful day for a picnic. No, it's not. Uh, a little bit rainy out there. And guys, before we jump into weather, a little bit of good news here. We asked the kiddos to send in some, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, weather or be junior me meteorologists and uh, send in their version of the weather. And today we've got one. This is Major. He's eight years old. Take a listen. Okay. Folks, just a sin that Sunday will be a really good day to jog, run, and also have fun. Because Sunday, this week, we're not going to have any rain. But next week, we will have some chances. And also, um, it will be an 80% chance today of no rain and 20% chance that, um, of is rain. So I just wanted to tell you that, guys. Um, okay. So oh, please hit the like button, yeah. subscribe, yeah, and this, and this is this is one of the episodes. See you next time on another episode of Major's Newscast. Major's Newscast. You are oh, adorable. That's a great major. Jingle. That is perfect. Major, uh, you know, was... you, you've really opened up the, the gates here for yeah. people to come in and take your job one of these Absolutely days. Absolutely have. And pardon the pun, buddy, he's totally stole your thunder. Yeah, yeah. he did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I was impressed. And we've got some more coming in. I'm loving it. We're going to show some more this week. Great good. job, Major. Yeah, good. And good stuff. And his forecast was pretty spot on. Let's talk about the rain. Uh, we have 1.51 for the month of March now. And uh, that puts us about three quarters of an inch behind on the average there and as we look since January 1st 4.45 so we're over an inch below average we're going to pick up a little bit today I don't know that it will be much but uh, maybe some more by the end of the week a few drops here on live cam we see the showers coming down 66 degrees at the airport dew point is at 58 east Julie winds at about six miles per hour and they're looking at the Doppler radar. We've got some showers developing. It's just a little waves of light rain coming through Bear County as we speak right now so you may have to use windshield wipers for about you know, uh, a minute or so, and then the rain will move on. But that's sort of the nature of this setup. We're seeing that around Skeen, New Braunfels here in San Antonio, and looking at some of the Transguide cameras. Those roads are wet out there. Uh, we're, we're seeing some of these showers work through south to north. Seeing a few returns even here around downtown. Temperatures right now, 65 degrees, Boulevard 61, Bernie State 64 down there in Divine, 67 in Pleasanton. And uh, we are seeing some warmer numbers there along the coast. Uh, we're seeing some sun down there. And uh, we're seeing the, just sort of a warmer air mass start to work back here into uh, South Texas. Dew points, uh, well, they will be lower tomorrow. We'll get a funnel boundary through here. So the dew points drop off. Tomorrow should be really nice. Wednesday, I think, is a pretty good day, too. But as we get into Thursday and Friday, dew points go way up. We're going to get some more chances for rain. We could see some decent thunderstorms, I think, Thursday into Friday. Those are some days I want to watch there as we get some energy coming in and maybe a frontal boundary as well. Upper-level winds show that we got everything coming out of the south and west. 
Uh, so some disturbance, disturbances coming through. And then there's our big area of low pressure off to the north. So that'll move away. That's what's going to help drive that front through uh, by tomorrow morning. Our next rainmaker is back here over the Pacific Northwest. And so we're in a pretty active pattern now, just seeing things uh, coming through. And uh, so we'll get some more rain chances out of that as well. Futurecast shows uh, some showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms as we get into the afternoon, especially east of I-35. That's where the best chance will be. Even into this evening, still some slight chances. But here comes that front sometime overnight. And I think by tomorrow morning, we'll start to feel the effects. Maybe some breezier winds tomorrow, but drier air and lots of sun. Temperatures aren't going to be cooler because uh, the, we're going to see all that sun. I think probably still in the low 80s, but nice nonetheless. Futurecast. Shows that uh, we'll get a few more clouds on Wednesday. By Thursday, we've got a dry line setting up. Dry lines don't really help to create all that much rain, but uh, we may get some showers, a couple thunderstorms out of this. I think Friday's probably our better day. We'll get a funnel battery in here. Some showers and storms will redevelop. Forecast for today, 79, 30% chance of some rain. Easterly winds 5 to 15. We'll go 82 tomorrow, low humidity. 79 Wednesday, bit more cloud cover, and then the rain chances kick in. Right now, 30% chance on Thursday, 40% chance on Friday, and then some more chances as we get into the weekend. But as we get closer, it's entirely possible these rain chances could go up. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 950, still 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. We're back with some pictures of healthcare workers around San Antonio. These are Kimberly and Janet, child care uh, over at Idea Public Schools. Thank you, Kimberly and Janet, for all you do. And this is a group at Well Known Insurance. Thank you so much for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. Submit your pictures of a healthcare worker in your life. Just go to ksat.com and search for Community Gallery. Before we get a last look at weather in this hour, we are scanning trans guide cameras around the Alamo City. And the roads look relatively dry in a lot of these shots, uh, but traffic is still very, very light. As a matter of fact, it seems has gotten lighter by the day. Fewest cars we've seen around here in a very long time. Sure seems that way. And uh, we do have a couple showers around, some light showers. Um, we'll see that through, I'd say, the early afternoon, and then maybe things start to quiet down a little better. We'll start to see things move off to the east. As we get into tonight, drier air moves in. Tomorrow should be a gorgeous day. Mostly sunny skies, 82, low humidity. In fact, temperatures will drop all the way down into the uh, low 50s. It looks like Wednesday morning. But we'll get some more rain chances by the end of the week. Maybe some thunderstorms Thursday and Friday. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Bush Beer has got a fantastic offer for people. And we told you how pet adoptions had soared in cities like New York and out in maybe, uh, was it San Francisco, I think? Yeah. Yeah. This is a win-win situation for everybody, I tell you. I love this line. Dogs may be a man's best friend, and beer is also a good buddy. A Bush Beer teaming up with Midwest Animal Rescue to help get dogs fostered to be adopted, to help incentivize people to bring a furry friend home. The beer company is offering a prize they call Bush Beer for three months. Now, the rules for this promotion, fairly simple. You adopt a foster or foster a dog through Midwest Animal Rescue. Send proof to Bush through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. You have to follow them on social network. And they will provide up to 500 winners with prepaid debit cards worth $100. Bush will be providing up to 500 winners with those debit cards, which is accepting applications or rather submissions through April 25th. Uh, send the proof to Bush through Facebook, on Twitter, or Instagram. Users must also follow Bush on the social network. Thanks for being with us, everybody.